So, unless you've been living under a rock recently, the Tier 10 Heavies have had an HP buff. And one of those that had the buff is the E100. And one of my subscribers, George Atala, asked if I could have a look at the E100. Now, I don't normally do this, but I thought, yeah, why not? I've got a lot of footage on the E100, might as well do a video. So, let's have a look at this German Tier 10 beast. Hello again everybody and welcome back to Fujits Bits and as I said in the intro this is a subscriber requested video on this beast the German tier 10 heavy the E100. A tank that well surprises and shocks a lot of people. Looking at it, well, as you can see there, it's got one of the best HPs now. It's had a buff of 450 additional hit points. Firepower, well, you can see the DPM is still pretty mediocre along with its penetration, even if you load the calibrated shells. Damage, however, boy, it's big. Best in class, best in tier. With the VK-72, which has the same gun, pretty much the same, you can see here that the caliber is pretty good. The rate of fire, not so great. Reload time, not so great. Base aim time, not so great. Um, dispersion, not so great. <laughs> the depression, not so good, but mediocre. And on paper, you know, it's a pretty average tank. And as you can see here, Wargaming recommend you don't do much with it, apart from long range sniping, which I would not agree with. But how did it stack up with the other tier 10 heavies? Well, as you can see, a DPM is not worst. You got the penetration and the alpha are pretty good. Rate of fire, pretty bad. Reload, pretty bad. Speed, meh, is what it is. Depression, meh, is what it is. Credit coefficiency, it's the worst. And look at the win rates. Aside from the IS-7, it is the worst performing tier 10. Now what is it? Well, this is the armor, and everybody thinks that the E100 armor is absolutely impenetrable. It's not. It's actually relatively weak. And you need to know how to handle this thing. This is it facing another E100 on its standard AP. And as you can see, it's a great side scraper. Um, but that lower plate is very, very vulnerable. Now if I stick in the heat, then the cheeks also become incredibly vulnerable as well. And this is the thing with the E100. Stick Pramo in, and frontally, it's not as strong as you think. This is what uh, I run it with, by the way. I run it with chocolates and all the crew skills, and I stick in calibrated shells, because I want that extra penetration. But what's the tank like to play? Well, if you understand its angles, and you understand the parameters and the meta of this tank, it's actually quite a nice heavy and it really does need that additional HP that it's been recently given. Now I say that because this has been one of the most underperforming tier 10s. Even Wargaming stats show that. But why? Well, is it the tank or is it the way that it's being played? And I'm erring on the side of it's not actually the tank, it's the way that people play it. And people just don't understand this tank in all honesty. They think that because it's a, it looks like a big box of steel, that it's, it's like a mouse and it'll bounce everything till the cows come home. That's not strictly true with this thing, as you've seen from the armor profile. It is pretty vulnerable. However, if you manage to get it hauled down and you manage to get into a position where you're gonna side scrape and hide those turret cheeks, then yes, it will bounce. The gun on it, apart from having a long load time and a longish aim time, is actually really nice. You've got some great penetration in real terms and you've got some really good end alpha. I mean, this churns out a whopping amount of damage when it wants to. Now, as you can see here, there's an E100 switched to the APCR, well, heat, and I can pen him easily in the cheeks. This is what you need to understand about the E100, guys. The E100 is not that tank there. It's not a mouse. It is not one big red tomato. It will be and can be punished. It does struggle sometimes with the penetration, uh, as you've seen there, and as you're going to see again in a moment. 
but generally speaking you should be doing an average of around two and a half thousand damage in this thing and you should be bouncing quite a bit if you're angling it correctly the thing about the E100 and it, it's the massive thing about the E100 is people just over angle it and when you over angle it then you're going to struggle in it to be honest with you because people are going to pen you all over the place as you can see there we did 2500 we didn't set the world on fire this game I'm showing uh, mainly because the guy I'm playing with Yoda from the clan GNA which is Meads's clan we were in a game with two of his other clan mates on the opposition Fuselier X and Nilo Shark two incredibly good players both uh, super unicorns I believe but uh, the reason I'm showing this one is because there was a bit of banter before the game and well, well we annihilate them so it's always good to show this is what I like about the E100 with a bit of time and patience this gun is fantastic and Wargaming do recommend that it's good for long range sniping it's not bad actually I mean a lot of people bemoan the gun but the, the reason they bemoan the gun is because they try to snapshot it and if you're trying to snapshot this thing before that aiming reticle comes down then you're not really going to do it any justice because it does take a while for the reticle to come down once the reticle's down boy it is an accurate gun and you will pen and as long as you're waiting and aiming correctly you can cause a lot of damage guys in this thing i mean this gun on this is a beast so look at me on the amx here i'm just going to wait and then you know 671 straight into him if i would have snapped that shot the chances are i would have missed him and this is the thing and if you if you try to snap on it you're not going to get these types of shots and this is why people bemoan the E100. So there again, we did 2,500, did 300 damage. It bounced 300, sorry. We're only getting third class. It's not setting the world on fire. But the tank itself is incredibly versatile. And as I say, a lot of the failings with the tank is not because of the tank. It's because of the way we play the tank. And we generally try to rush in it. And we stick it in harm's way. I mean, I've stuck it in harm's way here, but I've already bounced 965. I didn't show you those part of the clips. And I've only dished out 1,000. But the thing about the E100, I mean, look at this for a shot. I mean, this is how good the gun is. I mean, the gun is very good. I mean, that's an FV215B haul down. And you get it through the commander's cupola, and he's gone. I mean, you can do things like this in the E100. You really can. And as long as you take your time with it, as long as you are not rushing like a madman, then you will get the maximum out of this tank. Yes, it has got fantastic armor, and it's a heavy, guys, and it's meant to be a bully. And it has a long reload for a reason, because it dishes out a lot of damage. So you can't stick this thing in harm's way and hope that your armor and hit points are gonna protect you they are not now we're not going to do a shed load of damage in this game i must admit we're going to take five kills however and we're going to just mop up and that's the that's the idea you know i mean we've taken the is4 we've taken the 215b we've taken the 95 uh, we took out something earlier and now we're going to take out the grill and i like i said i mean you're going to average around 2000 plus damage if you play this thing correctly and it's a great, fantastic tank, but you've just got to be patient with it. I mean, it's slow, which means you shouldn't be rolling in anyway, <laughs> quickly. And there's a reason for that. It's a slow, lumbering, heavy tank. And this is what you can do with the E100. Now, this game here, I don't do much damage. I'm showing you this replay because I want to show you how good of a side scraper this thing is actually is so i snapped the shot there and now i'm just going to side scrape and i'm going to bounce a shed load in this tank there's you know i mean they just can't get me in this position they can see me but they, they're not going to be able to pen me they'll probably track me but that's about it and the, the, the is7 knows what he's doing as well so there goes 460 that we bounced and we're just going to sit here I know all their tanks are mainly there, to be honest with you. You can't see them all, but a lot of them are there. And I'm just going to sit here, wait for my load, wait for it to, wait for the reticle to come down, see if I can get anything. No, I can't, so there's no point in me even trying. There, look, I could shoot that, but no, wait, and there you go, 662 into the front of the E4. 
Now, a lot of people turn around and say, yeah, yeah, but you're not playing it like a heavy now. Actually, I am, because they know I'm there. They all want a piece of me. It's, it's, that's how you should be playing the tanks, guys. Uh, that was a stupid shot because he just moved. Um, I shouldn't have done that shot. But, you know, in, in the idea behind the heavy is to bully the other side. And I've got almost all their tanks in front of me. Our meds now should have the ability to come around the back and flank them and wipe them up. And that's the idea. And this is what we should be doing. Now we bounce 1,100. And this is where people generally fail in heavy tanks. They think that because you're a heavy, you've got to be on the front line, you know, up front and personal with everybody. And every tank in the game has a role. And I keep saying this. In fact, I did a video on it. And you need to understand your role on the battlefield. And one of the roles of the E100 and these type of heavy tanks is to tie up the enemy like we've done there and let the meds come in and whittle them down, which they're doing. Here's a VK, there goes a VK. So, um, you know, we've, we've only done 830 damage. They're down to next to no tanks now. I'm gonna push on the E4, bounce him again. There's the IS-4, we've seen the IS-7 in the other corner. Now I'm just gonna keep pushing on the E4 because I've got all my hit points still, so I can. He's not gonna wipe me out. I've bounced 1,700. I've only dished out 1,400 in damage. Um, bounced another 640. That's 2,380 I've now bounced because I'm angling it correctly, and he goes. I mean, that just goes to show you how versatile this tank actually is. This is the last game, and I'm showing this replay for a couple of reasons. One, I wanna show you how versatile the E100 is still, and two, because a lot of people get you know, frustrated or, or intimidated when they see a well-known um, player on the opposite team. And in this one, it's the one Mo from the clan Raid, who is a truly fantastic player. And he's in an E100. And I'm showing you this because even nabs like me can brawl against pro players and come off the best. So here we've done 2,256. We've bounced 420. We've been in the thick of the action. You didn't see it earlier because I cut it short, but Mo has always been there, by the way, and I went past him earlier and I completely ignored him. I didn't want to engage with him. I wanted to take out some of the other tanks first, which we've done, allowing us to then focus on the bigger tanks. Now, as you can see, I've still got all my hit points. I've done 3,056 damage. I've blocked 420 and I've taken two kills. This is why I love the E100. I find it frustrating, yes. But with these additional hit points, I really think it is a completely different tank. It's much better. And it was needed, I'll be honest with you. The E100 was in need of something like this HP buff because it really does help it out. And it's a tank that does struggle. I mean, as I said, when you look at Wargaming stats for the 55 plus win rate players uh, between the last patch and, and the new patch, then this is one of the poorest performing tanks along with the IS-7. That, is it necessarily the tank as I keep saying? I don't know. I mean, sometimes I think it's not the tank. It, it's the way we play the tank. Because I've been rolling out in this thing. And the buff itself is only giving you more hit points. It hasn't changed any other parameter of the tank. The armor profile is the same. The gun is the same. Its playability is the same. And I think what generally has been happening is a couple of things. Firstly, people are playing it wrongly. And secondly, you know, the mediums and the missile tanks are able to counter these things pretty quickly, whereas now they don't because it's got that additional 450 hit points, which, grand scheme of things, isn't a lot. As you can see here, the one Mo is just going to wipe the floor with the rest of my team and it's just going to leave me and him together. And I've just left him on 200 HP there. He's not even bothering with me. He knows he cannot destroy me unless he gets, what, two ammo racks maybe? He knows he's not going to be able to sort me out uh, because he's got 268 points, I've got 2740. He's also suffering some module damage there. As you can see, he's got no loader, no tracks. Um, he's, in fact, he's lost a lot. <laughs> um, and he's easy pickings for me now. But the thing you have to remember is he played that completely correctly. There was no point focusing on me. So I did 3,931 damage. I get a second class. We take three kills. 
including the one mo, which is nice. We get some credits as well, which is also nice. And like I was about to say, the thing you have to remember about what the one mo did there, he did exactly the right thing. He, he took out the other tanks, and if you look at his uh, stats, he did over 5,000 damage in that game. I mean, that was incredibly well played. So, that has been the E100. I have been Fujit. It really has benefited from the HP buff, guys. And if you haven't been out in it yet, or you're still getting used to it, just remember, the armor is not as trolly as you think. You need to know how to angle this thing. And you need to remember that those cheeks on the turret are wide, wide open for Pramo. Aside from that, it's got a great gun. Okay, it's a slow reload. Great pen, fantastic alpha, and is actually quite versatile. By all means, comment, like, and everything below. If you haven't yet, please press subscribe. It's a beautiful thing to do, and cost you nothing puts a smile on my face. As usual, I want to do a big shout out to all my Patreons, because without their support, videos like this would be a lot harder so guys i really do appreciate the support that you give me if you've got any decent replays wing them across to me at fujitsblitz at gmail.com or you can post them to my discord server whichever is good enough for you and i will say my usual sign off which in these days is more poignant seriously with coronavirus out there stay safe out there guys have fun on the battlefield and happy tanking because really that's what it's all about staying safe having fun and being happy.